Hello, Curran here. This video is all about interaction with unidirectional data flow using d3.js. If you already understand the general update pattern, but you have no prior experience coding interactions in D3, then this video is for you. The topics we're going to cover here include listening for click events on circles, unidirectional data flow, the concept, what it's all about, selecting a mark, a circle, by clicking, highlighting the selected mark, and selecting a mark by hovering over it. Let's start with our bowl of fruit example. To start with, I'm going to fork this previous example, bowl of fruit with animated transitions. And then I'll change the title to bowl of fruit, click to select. And I'll clean up the readme here. The idea that we want to implement is that when you click on one of these circles, it should be selected and then it should show somehow that it's selected, maybe with a thick border around it. The first step of this is listening for click events on the circles. Over in our fruitbowl.js is where we're rendering the circles. And what we want to do is add a click event, and the place to do that is on the merged enter and update selection. So we can just add a line here that says dot on, this is part of the D3 selection API. It's for adding event listeners. So we can say on click. The first argument is the name of the event. And then the second argument is a callback function that gets invoked, in this case, when you click on it. So in the body of this function, just to make something simple to test if it works, I'm going to say console.log clicked. Now if I open up the dev tools and I click on one of these circles, it outputs clicked. There it is. So there it is. That's how you can add a click listener to circles. So now that we know when someone clicks on a circle, where do we go from here? Let's talk about the unidirectional data flow concept. The idea with unidirectional data flow is that the flow of control sort of goes in one direction. After you render whatever's on the screen, then the user can interact with what's on the screen, and that interaction causes a re-render, and then the loop continues. That's sort of what any interactive system looks like. After the user interacts by clicking, this is where our event listener comes into play. Something needs to happen though in between our event listener and our rendering, and this is changing state. State, in our case, will be, you know, which of these circles or fruits is selected. After we change the state, we should render everything again based on that new state and make sure to use the general update pattern so everything updates correctly and there's no glitches or bugs. So now let's implement this part here, changing the state. So far in index.js, we have what I would consider as state, which is our list of fruits. And these set timeouts here essentially change the state and then re-render. So we can follow a similar pattern to this when we get that click event. But the first thing we need is some state to change. So I think I'll add a new variable here that's going to represent the selected fruit. I can say let selected fruit equals, well, it's not going to be anything in the beginning. So I can just leave it as undefined or, well, better be explicit. We could just say null. It's just going to be null. There's no fruit selected right now. When we render our fruit bowl, in here somewhere is where we need to say that, all right, whenever the user clicks on a circle, we want to set the selected fruit to be 
whatever you know the ID is of that circle that the user clicked on and then re-render again. So let's start by sort of thinking about writing this as a function. Let's say const on um, click equals and let's just sort of imagine that this is going to be invoked when you click on a circle and it's going to be passed in the ID of the fruit. So it's going to take as input the ID of the fruit and what it's going to do is actually set this variable here, selected fruit, to be ID. And then in order to update what we're seeing, we should invoke the render function again. Now we need to make it so that this function actually gets invoked when you click on a circle. And to do that, we can pass it in as a prop to our fruit bowl function. Now in the implementation of fruit bowl, we can unpack this as well from our props on click. Now we have on click in scope here. But keep in mind that this on click should actually be past the ID of the clicked circle. So let's see if we can get access to the ID of the clicked circle in here first. The on click listener actually takes as input D, just like all these other callbacks. So I believe we can access d.id. So I'll just console.log d.id every time something gets clicked. Now if I open up the dev tools and click on a circle, we get these IDs printed out. All right, so far so good. Then the last step to sort of tie everything together here is to invoke this on click from the props instead of console.log. And we can even clean up this syntax a bit. We don't really need the curly braces or the semicolon. Now what happens is when you click on a circle, it takes the ID of that circle and passes it into this onClick function, which was unpacked from props.onClick. Now we can go back to our index.js and sort of make sure this is working. Uh, we can put a console.log right in here. Console.log ID. And I'll clear the console. And then now if I click, it still gets output from there. That means that this code is running and our selected fruit is now set. So if I say console.log selected fruit and click, all right. That looks great, that looks correct. And even if I move this out of this function and into the render function, which is being invoked right after it gets set, let's see if this works, it should. So if I click, all right, after I click, it gets set. But notice in the beginning, it's null, null, and null every time the render function is being invoked from these set timeouts down there, which is to be expected. What we have effectively done by that code change is selecting a mark by clicking. You know, we're getting the click event, we're getting the ID, and then we're storing that as being selected in our state. The next thing we need to do is highlight that selected mark. You know, make it appear differently than the other ones so that when you look at it, you know that it's selected. In order to render these things as selected, this fruit bowl function that does the rendering needs to know what the selected fruit is. So instead of console.logging it right there, we can pass it in to our fruit bowl function as another prop. Then over in fruitbowl.js, we can unpack that from our props object along with these other things. And this line is getting a little bit long. I think I'll just reformat it so that it's more readable like this. 
Okay, now we have the selected fruit ID in scope when we are doing our rendering logic right here. What I'm imagining we can do here is set the stroke, the outline, of the selected circle to be like a big black thick outline and the others that are not selected won't have any outline. So we can do this by setting the uh, stroke attribute on the merged enter and update selection. So right after we set the fill we can say dot attr stroke and this will be a function of d that should return different things depending on if d is the selected fruit or not. So what we can do is say okay if d dot id is equal to selected fruit and here is a nice place to use the ternary operator if d is equal to the selected fruit then set the stroke to be black otherwise we can set the stroke to be none that's a special value that says there's no stroke and I think I'll just format this a bit differently so that it's easier to read now let's see if it works if I click on one of these alright it's got a black stroke around it see that it works it's not very thick though so I think I'll just set the stroke width by saying dot ettr stroke dash width and let's set it to let's say five pixels or I wonder can we just say five five pixels all right that seems to work and check this out if I run the program again and then select maybe this one here see how it moves and it stays selected even after the other updates happen that's the magic of unidirectional data flow it doesn't matter where the changes come from because they all go into the same state lastly let's add a tiny bit more complexity and select a mark by hovering on it so when you hover over it gets selected and when you are not hovering over it should get deselected this one's kinda cool though so I'm gonna keep this and I'm gonna fork this one and I'm gonna change the title to be bowl of fruit hover to select then in our index.js see the way that we've named this is very specific to the clicking interaction but really what this function is doing it's just setting the selected fruit so I think I'll rename this I'll change it from on click to be set selected fruit then we can pass this into our props of our fruit bowl and then over in fruitbowl.js instead of unpacking on click we can unpack set selected fruit and then down here when we click instead of saying on click we can say select set selected fruit so now this should still work the same way it was working all right now our challenge is to make it work on hover instead of click instead of listening for the click event we can say on mouse over see now if you hover over it it gets selected the problem though is that when you are no longer hovering over it it's still selected so let's address that case I'm just gonna copy this logic here and add a new event listener on mouse out this triggers when the mouse is no longer over that mark and on mouse out we can say set selected fruit to be null and we don't even need D we're not using D at all so I'll just make that a set of parentheses let's see if it works all right see that it seems to work 
on mouse out, the selected fruit is set to null, and so nothing is highlighted. And then on mouse over, selected fruit is set to the ID of the hovered fruit. That's how you can use unidirectional data flow to use event listeners when you interact, change the state, and re-render using the general update pattern. But one nice thing, it's an amazing thing about the unidirectional data flow is that it establishes an architecture where a person is in the picture. See below this gray line there, I mean the whole bottom arrow um, is where the person, the viewer, sees what's on the screen. And then perception and cognition come into effect. So all the things about you know visual perception and th they're, the person is thinking about what they're seeing. And then that perception and cognition leads to volition and action. The person decides to do something. So this is one thing I love about unidirectional data flow is that it maps really well onto the high level picture of what interactive systems are all about. Namely, interacting with people, you know, computer-human interactive systems. All right, that's all for interaction with unidirectional data flow using d3.js. Thanks for watching. Take care.